Two low. Three low. Good morning. Uh, it's Paul Lugent here. Sorry for the delay in matches. We had a couple of injuries, etc. So it's our first match. So this is a playoff for uh, fifth and sixth place in the B section. Top and Luke Logan, the 17 year old from Sutton. Luke has done really well in this tournament so far. And out, one four. And out, five one. So Luke has gone into a nice 5 1 lead, but early. 6 1. David is a former junior international. He's away in New Zealand for the last couple of years and has just come back to Galway. And is uh, coaching up in Galway and hoping to get some new recruits for squash in the Galway Sligo area. So I wish him the best of luck with that. Galway is such a great, a great tradition, and Sligo as well. Galway having produced many great players, including current French international or Milet, and Sligo obviously producing Ashley Blake, again the number two and number three in the Irish, current Irish women's senior team. They've done so well in the last couple of years. A couple of silver medals at the European Championships in the last couple of years. They played in the Worlds last December in Canada. We got a very credible eighth position, justifying their seeding. A Li little bit unlucky again in the match against Australia. Australia objected to Madeleine Perry, saying that she was she had been injured in the previous game and they claimed that she sh she couldn't play against Australia, so they pulled a little bit of a fast one. Um, Madeline actually was fit, fit to play and what was unfit in the previous game. Anyway, so we, she couldn't play, so... And out, four nine. With the weakened team then, Australia beat us for seventh place. Three, three ladies, Madeline, Ashling and Laura have been absolute stalwarts for Ireland over the last 20 years. Laura made her debut in 1994. Madeline in 1997 in Denmark in the Europeans and Ashling in 1999 in Austria in the Europeans. And they've been ever present since then, except for injury. So absolute stalwarts for women's squash in Ireland. But some great achievements. So Luke Logan has got his first game ball in this playoff for fifth and sixth place in the men's B section. Luke will be hoping to play on the Irish under-17s team in the European Championships in Portugal in May. And Luke wins that first game, 
Hand out, one love. Tee, August Falchi, the great mortis in the hair and squash. Oh, Fitzwilliam Club, the Pallia, clear. Two love. Kieran Roach, you're welcome here to Fitzwilliam Club again. And thanks, Paul. Two love. We're in the middle of the fifth, sixth playoff in the B section between Luke Logan of Sutton and David Noon, who plays out of. Uh, Galway Long Tennis Club, Squashing Long Tennis Club. Huh. All right. Don't know why Luke didn't try and get that ball. <clears throat> I've seen people do it, but uh, not when they fall on their, on their back. Usually if they fall on the front, it's easier to get up quickly. And now, one four. <coughs> one four. David slipped that time. Two Sometimes, four. actually, when players are perspiring or sweating, uh, if it gets onto the floor, it can cause the shoe to slightly uh, grip too tight on the floor. And that's moving, uh, and that changing direction, can find our foot isn't uh, reacting as it should on the, on the wooden floor. That's lovely length from David. Just a, a gentle little push of a ball because the, it was such a good length. It's very difficult to get. For these players, this is the fourth game. Oh, that's unfortunate. Luke was onto it, ready to play it. Seven two. Attacking drive, I think, down this uh, his forehand, and the ball. Caught in the nick and just didn't come out to him. Oh, that's a lovely drop from Luke. And now, three seven. Lucas uh, plays at a certain coach by Owen Ryan. There are many uh, highly promising young players. Um, in that stable or school of players in Sutton at the moment. Luke is one of the brighter lights of it. Oh, that's a bad miss from David. Uh, a lot of the players, like Sam Buckley, Colin Warren, um, Gavin Lestrange, um, Oh, lovely squash players. They play very good structured games. They're very well taught. Yeah. David's annoyed with himself there. Six, seven. For a totally unforced error. Oh, that's a very good position. Of a, if he'd crossed the course, he was in dead trouble. Created another opportunity and missed it. Seven all. Seven all. Uh, David's playing in Galway. Let's get one or two encouraging calls to try and get him a bit more focused. It's a very big lead has gone away on him. Oh, it's a lovely touch. I remember myself when I um, started um, Nine, watching junior squash, seeing David as a young man, not much difference in age than his opponent today, Luke, and he really was one of the top juniors in the country. Beautiful squash player. He's been abroad for quite a number of years, a good few years, and I returned, I think, last summer. Our hope is that 
be able to get appropriate employment and be able to stay here. Yeah. A bad loss, particularly to, to Galway. Oh, that's a lovely recovery shot from Luke. Uh, David had dug him right into the into the corner and he got himself out by playing a high lob that gave him time to recover. Ten each. David still won the point. Oh, it was a lovely job. Beautiful job. 11-10 game ball. He went by two clear points. Once he get to 10 all. All. You can see David really motored there to get to that boast of Luke's. There's a lot of urgency in the way he played it. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. How did David get that angle from that position on such a stretch? Superb. there I was sure that someone had played a winning shot and Luke particularly was his scrambling was superb but David prevailed to make it one off one of the difficulties for um, David in Galway would be the opportunity he has to play top class players and you'd wonder if um, if he's getting enough seriously competitive games uh, to equip him to deal with a weekend like this where he has to play four games in, in a matter really of less of just two days, playing Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and here Sunday morning to play for the, the final time in the weekend, long, hard weekend of squash. I kind of remind you all that for all of these players, no matter how fit and um, accomplished they are, Monday morning will be greeted with a lot of very stiff bodies that will reluctantly be getting themselves out of bed. And if it's my case, almost need assistance to get the, the basic shirt on over aching muscles. At the time, you never, you always feel, why do I do this to myself? But while you're in the middle of the games, you think, hey, it's well worth it. The joy of sport. It's funny the thoughts that go through your head. I was just looking at David there in frustration. Uh, threw his racket in the air and half grasped it and it, it tumbled to the ground. I remember having words with him in a, a junior competition many years ago about doing that at the end of a game. Everything stays the same sometimes. It's a lovely drop that Luke has. Logically, you'd expect that the experience of David would prevail in, in, in a game like this. Because Luke really is a lovely squash player. Left-handed as well, which creates a slight different problem. Ah, lovely shot, David. He was able to pick that up high over his head and put an angle on the racket to touch it into the left-hand side, left-hand court. Three love. Three love.
Actually, it's interesting that in the first game that Luke won quite convincingly. Um, there was a sense that David was moving quite lethargically. I almost felt that his the lactic acid was a stroke as Luke didn't get out of David's way, therefore prevented him from hitting the ball. Oh, it was unfortunate there. He got to it and played the right shot, but it might be slightly too much of a stretch. Yes, I felt that David was quite lethargic in the first game. Sometimes after a hard weekend on a Sunday morning, the lactic acid was screaming at your muscles, telling them not to be moving too much. And sometimes it will take you a, the first game to begin to, to shift them sufficiently that the muscles do what you tell them to do more effectively. That seems to be the case in David. In David's case, he's moving much better now. Onto the ball much quicker, with much more purpose. 2-6. Well, the big difference is that he has got the extra power over Luke. He can generate a lot of pace on the ball. But he needs to, that it hasn't quite got yet. But David and I both know that in a year or two's time, that'll be much, much more a part of Luke's game. He continues to develop. Certainly one of the brighter prospects we have in Dublin at the moment. frustration at himself, having been in control of the rally for five shots and Luke really just scrambling to to dig retrieval shots out. David plays the loose one and gives the point away. That's the advantage of being good at, at scrambling and retrieving difficult shots. You never know when it turns to your advantage. A lovely shot from David again. Again, he's using a lot more power than he was earlier on. Likes that post from the, his forehand from the left hand side very frequently. It's a nice running boast. It's very much more a containing shot at the at the level that these players are. At my level, that would be an attacking winning shot, but in, in their case, it's just a containing one because of the ability to to get up the court and quickly get to the ball that these players all have. Luke looks a little bit <coughs> askew at Neil Brannigan, the referee, because he thought he probably should have got a stroke there. David wins the third game. Actually, one of the things that uh, I always notice is that young lads in 13, 15, 16 year old age group, as a general rule, tend not to query decisions at all. It seems to be uh, something that comes into their play as they hit he, he, adulthood. The ability to, to argue with the referee. Partly I think it's coaching and people like Owen Ryan would be very strict about um, players accepting decisions and uh, riding with it. Again, it shows one of the other bigger advantages of uh, playing sport, whatever type of sport, but 
squash, as with many other sports, is the good the discipline and the good habits it teaches the young people. Just another reason to encourage the youth of our country to get out and play sport. And certainly, for those so inclined, squash is a wonderful sport to, to play and enjoy. Earlier this week, I took a young lad onto a court for the first time. Well, he was in his teens. But just to see the enjoyment he got out of the intense physical exercise was heartwarming. It's a pity more opportunities aren't available to youngsters around the country to play a sport like this. So David Noon leads two games to one. You see David is serving from the left-hand court because Luke is left-handed. Normally, the commencing with squash is <coughs> gone into the backhand of the opponent. Although some players are actually very adept at playing backhand and you might change and play into their forehand as, as the starting point. drive. Great depth to it from Luke. No. Again, good depth from Luke that forced David into he was going to play a, a straight drive. Realised he couldn't get his racket behind it. We tried to play both, that wasn't successful. Ah, that's superb. A superb attacking drive from David. It was a little beforehand. Luke just got the racket to it, but could only dolly it up in the air, and David was onto it very quickly before Luke could fully re recover to the tee. <laughs> ah, lovely touch from David. <coughs> Very nice. Uh, not quite a drop from Luke. It was much more. Um, it pushed the ball low into the front wall, but the important factor was. <laughs> ah, that's a lovely, lovely drop from from Luke. It was interesting the shot before David had played a drop, which he was full sure Luke wasn't going to get to him. When Luke got to it, he suddenly had to generate some energy into himself to, to reach it. The presumption of a winner ultimately cost him. Another point gone away from David. 5-3, so Luke has taken an early lead in this game. This is a highly uh, interesting and very competitive. That's a beautiful return from Luke. He's turning David in all shapes. Ah, yes. That's an absolutely superb rally of squash. I wish we had replay and we could 
look at that again, the movement of both players. I mean, particularly David Dune. <laughs> Play the lactic acid has disappeared from his muscles. <clears throat> to work very hard for it, but then he gets a soft point after it. Five each. In many ways, playing as they are for fifth and sixth place are relatively, there's not much at stake except the enjoyment of the game and the enjoyment of competition that both of these young lad and young man thoroughly enjoy. And the satisfaction that competing at the top level for themselves and genders in them. In them. It's so easy on a Sunday morning when you're tired and in, in a match where the result isn't going to make a huge amount of difference to just go through the motions. But the two lads are thoroughly enjoying themselves and enjoying the challenge they're presenting to each other. And I have to say, sometimes it's almost more enjoyable to watch this match than the ones that are are full of tension. Oh, that's unlucky, Luke. He got to the ball very nicely. Just wasn't able to generate enough of an angle to play that post. 8-6. I was just talking just before the game started to Rory Byrne. Oh, a multiple Irish international at junior level and at the senior international. And he was saying that Luke is a superb prospect and a beautiful squash player and he's absolutely right. Oh, David just got a, a lucky nick to get a match ball, 10-7. Oh, that's a beautiful shot from David to win the game. So the lads shake hands, acknowledge, thank each other for the sport and thank the referee, Neil Brannigan, for a job well done. In fairness, I can't remember one single call either player made. They just cleared space for each other. Uh, so, David Noon wins 4-11, 13-11, 11-7, 11-6.